Hey there, job seekers. Are you tired of rejection emails that start with after careful consideration and end with you crying into a half-empty bag of Cheetos? Well, worry no more. Introducing Job Pill. That's right, one magical capsule and boom, you're suddenly everyone's dream candidate. Hiring managers will chase you. Recruiters will fight each other in parking lots for your resume. You'll walk into interviews and they'll say, please stop talking. You're hired. Side effects may include a corner office, free snacks that aren't off-brand granola bars, and co-workers who actually refill the coffee pot. Unfortunately, job pill doesn't exist. It will never exist. However, lucky for you, my tips are the second best thing that you can get other than a job pill and hopefully my tips actually work for you. To be honest, I've never had a ton of very brutal and overbearing traditional tech interviews that you see floating online. Most of my tech interviews were the type of interviews where the team or the person interviewing usually already wants you or they've already decided, at least in the back of their mind, they were going to hire you. So they weren't very stressful in the way that you might might think and honestly believe it or not this is the norm for a lot of really strong students in college and it's the norm for a lot of really strong candidates in general and if I'm being honest a big portion of the people who land really high paying internships and really high paying jobs do not have to do very aggressive interviews especially in engineering well at least I didn't and a lot of people I know didn't have to do this but before we go too far in this video I need you to understand the goal of this video is not just to teach you how to ace interviews, but also to change your perspective on interviews in general, as well as how to land interviews to begin with, because that's a big portion. How to do well in the interviews, and then how do I actually get an interview? If you don't know me, my name is Jovan Hall. I have a master's degree in electronics engineering and undergrad in optical engineering, optoelectronics engineering researcher. So although I didn't have many extremely brutal interviews and had to code a storm up to get a job those little conversations i did have obviously turned into high ping internships when i mean high ping internships i mean seven thousand a month plus for the internship and in this video i'm going to explain all the secrets that companies and your competition does not want you to know regarding these interviews and regarding these job positions we'll keep it simple throughout the video how to prep for the interview, how to talk about your projects like you know what you're actually talking about without sounding like you're full of nonsense, and what to say if you do get hit with a technical interview and how to pass that. There are two types of interviews. There are behavioral interviews and there are technical interviews. A behavioral interview is a structured conversation about how you work. This includes your judgment, communication, teamwork, ownership of projects, and when you have these type of interviews, you have to use techniques. And a big technique that I like to use is the STAR technique, which is situation, task, action, result. Plus, there's something called CARS2, which is challenge, alternative, and rationale. Meaning that STARS is how you describe your job and interview experience, and CAR is more so challenges that you faced, rationale, how you dealt with these challenges, so on and so forth. So for behavioral interviews, the whole goal is to explain every single project on your resume using the STAR and CAR techniques. You have to be good at that, obviously. Understand your resume and be able to explain it using these techniques. A technical interview is an assessment of how you solve engineering problems or, if you're not an engineering student, problems in general. So usually these involve concepts and your execution on said concepts. In technical interviews, the goal isn't for you to find the exact specific answer. It's more so to assess how you think about things and also to assess your technical knowledge on specific skills that they may need. So in technical interviews, there'll be probably some tasks like coding, circuit system designs, math, physics questions, and even in engineering interviews, they may ask a few technical questions, but nothing too complex, so don't stress about it, but just make sure you have a strong understanding. There's a technique that you can use for technical questions as well. It's called the red air technique. So the red is when you restate the problem, the examples that you can use for problems that are similar to this, you have diagrams, assumptions that you can write down yourself, and then how you can implement them into the problem. Also, you can reflect on problems or reflect on how you solve this problem. The whole goal of a technical interview is to see how you, the student or the young career professional, approach a problem. 
that's the entire goal of it and obviously they want to see if you know what you're talking about in your field but usually the technical interviews at least unless it's something for a crazy big complex company or maybe a new startup the technical questions they ask will not be extremely complex questions there'll be some base level question and the entire goal is to see how you approach it and how you're able to use your knowledge to explain your approach and to walk them through your approach so the first tip that i have for interviews i have five tips in total the first tip if possible avoid interviews avoid them like i said earlier i'm gonna be very honest high achieving students typically don't get real technical interviews unless it's for a company like apple and video one of the big dogs where you're getting 200k out the gate when you graduate companies already know who they want to hire and they make that student or candidate fit the mold of the person they want to hire they make that person fit the mold if a company wants you bad enough and they'll know they want you based off of your resume based off of who you are if they know you they will create a job just so they can hire you the only time high achieving students have to do real technical interviews like i said is if they are applying for extremely competitive job opportunities the best way to avoid technical interviews is to think outside the box and use your network of professors and organizations at school or maybe of people you know to get close to the person who does the actual hiring that's what you have to do for example at my university that I graduated from, they had NSBE, which is the National Society of Black Engineers, and SPIE, which is the International Society for Optics and Photonics. Also, every tenure professor usually has one or two internship opportunities up their sleeve reserved for their favorite students. So in these organizations, there are people obviously who, who have job openings and these professors know internship opportunities. And I'm not speaking just crazy. This is how I landed a lot of my opportunities. I didn't go out and randomly apply online to internships. I knew professors, tenured professors who knew about internships. I was a part of these organizations that had people in them who wanted to hire competitive engineers. That's how you land them as people you know. And if you don't really fit the mold they want, they will make you fit the mold. That's how it's done. Tip number two, don't lie. Don't lie. Don't lie, don't lie, don't lie. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. Failing an interview is actually harder than it seems, especially the behavioral interviews. The reason it's harder than it seems is because the person interviewing you only knows what you tell them. They don't know anything else. So if you get a behavioral interview and you don't land the job, meaning you failed the interview because you didn't get the job, you only failed because they didn't really believe what you told them. Let me let you in on this. If you land an interview, that means your resume is good enough to show them that you fit the job. The resume showed them that you fit the job. Point blank period. I have a video on resumes, by the way. If you land the interview and you fail it, you don't get the job, they didn't believe you, meaning that you kind of lied or exacerbated on your resume. The biggest problem is that a lot of students or early career people try to hype themselves up on their resume. And when this hyped up resume gets you a call back for an interview, you're going to look stupid when you're unable to explain any of the projects, work experience, or skills on said resume. So the key is to avoid this and not lie. Rather than lying about your skills and experience, only put experiences that you actually have, but instead be able to explain all these experiences in an extremely efficient way. If you put you built a, a circuit on your resume it could be the most basic circuit ever as long as you're able to explain everything in it you will be fine when i was a junior in college when i was a junior i had literally zero work experience but what helped me is that the projects on my resume that i completed in class i was able to explain them extremely efficiently in all my interviews every single one i was able to explain all my projects every step on my resume in a very efficient way tip number three Dress better than everyone else. Dress better than everyone else that should, that's interviewing. This should go without saying if I'm being honest. And, I'm, and I almost didn't put this tip because to me, it should be self-explanatory. But for the life of me, please dress up if you plan on interviewing. Please make sure your hair is done. Make sure if you're a young man, you wear a tie and you iron your shirt. Make sure if you're a young woman, 
you wear a nice neutral color blouse and there's no chick-fil-a sauce on your shirt or on your or stained on your favorite dress please make sure you dress up and you look presentable the entire goal of any of this is to be the best and land the best positions that's what you want and most students and professionals goal isn't to be the best if you believe it or not their goal is to be good enough your goal is to be the best by always making sure you dress up this is a simple but effective way to make sure you always stand out in a crowd of average people because the majority of people in these crowds or applying are pretty average i've been to many career fairs in my life and there are always students always who come in a t-shirt jeans and a hoodie never let this be you i don't care where you go never let this be you dress like this do not dress like this at an interview i don't care i don't care don't do it don't care what anyone tells you do dress up everywhere you go tip number four have a niche probably the most important tip should be tip number one but whatever it's tip number four what this means is you need to have a unique and specific skill set relevant to the career field you want to go into the reason i did not have to do many deep and technical interviews is because of this if i'm being honest it's because of this my undergrad major optical engineering was very very niche i also offered a very specific skill set that is not found most times i remember very vividly i was at an engineering conference and a representative from an engineering company came up to me they came up to me specifically because they heard me tell another company that i was pursuing an optics engineering degree mind you i had no work experience at this point and that day i landed multiple internships without much interviewing obviously you should not randomly go into optical engineering because i was i did it years ago but what you should do is have a very specific, almost niche set of skills that many other people with your major or many other people in general just don't have. For example, and this is completely off the wall, if you are an English major, an English major, a very niche skill set that you can get that can set you apart from your competition is becoming fluent in Python or something. Now you can write codes to help automate your reports, or you can learn how to build an in-depth database to store grants and proposals in your job. All I'm saying is, think outside the box. Do not always be set in what people tell you. Always think outside the box, no matter what, because this is how you really land opportunities without doing much interviewing, and this is how you escape the rat race of never landing an opportunity. Tip number five, my last tip, full court press. If you are a student, or a young professional it is always healthy to have balance in your life i'm gonna be honest you don't want to overwork yourself and all that however every stage of life does not require the same amount of balance what do i mean by this according to the labor market for recent college graduates 41.3 percent of recent grads are underemployed and 33.7 percent of college grads in general are eternally underemployed and recent grads and young workers lead the race in unemployment stats today right now they lead the race across the board why am i even saying all this i'm saying this because unless you are a little delusional and oddly aggressive with your goals you will definitely get ordinary results i'm gonna be honest with you unless you're just freakishly intelligent i know i'm not but if you fit that mode you're going to get ordinary results and you'll probably end up underemployed unemployed or in a position that you didn't even want to be in to begin with so how do you full court press but in a good way that will get you what you, what you want well it's very simple just try have a real and honest plan on what you want to do with your degree and actually try to go out there and get what you want even if it seems impossible you should know what industries not just companies but what industries you can get into with your degree and your niche skill set and you should also know exactly what these industries and companies expect from you considering your major and don't forget you can think outside the box the real problem is this most students are intellectually lazy very intellectually lazy it's not your degree that will set you up it's you that will set you up a degree is a tool a degree is not you you are you your goal is to think outside the box think about what you want in life how do i get that in life what do they expect from me how can i add value to said company or said industry and pursue that if you do these things you will not only land interviews or land tech interviews that's very small you will land the life that you want. I was landing seven, eight, nine, ten 10 interviews in one semester when I was in college with zero work experience, all because I had a plan, I had a niche skill set. I always dressed up everywhere I went. I didn't care about anything else. If I was meeting a professional, I'm wearing a suit and tie every single time. 
If you do these tips, you will get the life that you want, but you have to be proactive. Anyways, my name is Jovan. If you have any questions for me, comment down below, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.